All right, we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Greg George. Uh, I'm an applications engineer here at 3D Systems. And today we're doing a joint webinar with Exact Metrology and 3D Systems, um, talking about 3D scanning and reverse engineering uh, for firearms. Uh, so today what I want to do is go over the schedule. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is a quick product overview uh, discussing what we what products we offer in this area, and then we'll do um, a talk about the scan-based design workflow and how that, that uh, workflow works. And then I have a few firearm-specific workflows that I can speak to. And then I want to show a capture scanner demonstration alongside a design X demonstration. So that is the schedule for today. So. On the WebEx here, I actually have a live streaming uh, capture scanner here on my desk. And the capture scanner is designed to bring physical objects directly into CAD. So the idea here is you can automate and create precise 3D uh, models inside of a CAD environment and generate um, models from there. So I have this uh, capture unit. It is a blue light scanner. Um, and as you can see on the live stream, I have a part sitting on the turntable that I'm going to go ahead and scan today. Um, so we're, we're going to use that capture scanner. And then I'm going to transition into a scan to CAD workflow, which I believe relates to the firearms industry pretty well. So the scan to CAD workflow is designed to accomplish a few different, or solve a few different problems. Um, lost or missing design pieces, or the ability to create pieces that mate another object. So think about maybe an aftermarket object that fits a certain type of product. Um, and the idea here is that we will scan and capture that information and bring it into a CAD environment where you can make that data available uh, for downstream processes. Um, as 3D systems, we have a few different software products that go along with the capture scanner to address this market. And as you can see at the bottom, these three different products are designed to deliver precise three, uh, digital 3D models and CAD assemblies of physical objects for use in design, engineering, and manufacturing. Um, starting at the left, the product that I'm going to use today is Geomagic Design X. And as you can see right there, it says the ultimate 3D CAD, uh, scan to CAD solution. So this is a standalone product that we have, a software product that connects to scanning devices or imports their data. And it also connects to CAD packages, so I can send the data that we extract from scan data over to different CAD solutions. Um, so that is the one I'm going to be using today. The next product that we have that uh, addresses this market as well is the Geomagic for SolidWorks product. And what we did there is we took a subset of the 3D, uh, Geomagic Design X product, and we brought that inside of the SOLIDWORKS environment. Um, because SOLIDWORKS is a standalone CAD itself, uh, what we brought over are some plug-in tools, scan processing tools, and some model extraction tools. So the, the model extraction tools are built right into the SOLIDWORKS environment, so it is a standalone uh, product that runs inside of SOLIDWORKS. On the right-hand side here, I have Geomagic Wrap, which is a scan, meshing, and surfacing tool. So this product connects to scanners and captures the information, allows you to process the data, and uh, extract surfaces, and then export those out for different um, for different applications. Um, many customers of ours have all three of these different products. They can work in concert with each other. Um, for example, you could have uh, Geomagic Wrap as a scan and data collection uh, software in one department, and an example, uh, Design X in another department 
where the design is happening. Um, so these three different offerings help you accomplish some different workflows that we'll talk about here in a minute. Um, so Geomagic Design X, as I talked about a little bit, it is a, it's the industry's most comprehensive reverse engineering tool. So what we do is we combine a history-based CAD uh, package with 3D scan data processing. So you can create a fully feature-based editable model inside of our DesignX product. And then it's also compatible with your existing CAD software. So we're able to take that CAD geometry and send it over as native entities, as you'll see here in a minute. So what does the workflow look like? Just to make sure we're all on the same page, as I talked about before, I have the capture scanner on the, the desk that you can see. So what we're gonna do is use that capture scanning device to collect uh, mesh information, which is a, a model representation of the object that we're scanning. We're gonna process that mesh in a, in one way, we're gonna extract features uh, that would be sent over to CAD. So as you can see in the middle here, we can take the um, that data and we can extract features from that data and send it over to CAD, to CAD packages, or I can take that mesh information and send out a watertight mesh. So some, Sometimes you would have a simulation or printing where you may want to output that type of model. And then along the bottom, we can create highly accurate, um, uh, rapid, rapidly extracted surfaces from that data. So you can see as-built modeling using automatic ex surface extraction. So there are three types of deliverables, three categories of deliverables that can come out of this DesignX package, as you can see a mesh, uh, a native CAD translation, and then an accurate CAD conversion from an extracted model there. Um, here are three different examples of a firearm uh, workflow that I have seen in the industry. On the left-hand side, uh, many people will use our products to design mating parts. So the idea is there is a, a manufacturer of this device that you might need to make a compatible um, accessory for it. Um, so as, an, as you can see on this side, there are very highly organic shapes to these different devices. And you can design your a piece to fit exactly to a very specific object there. So designing mating parts. Um, the middle one is a very similar application, but it, it varies slightly. Many times you'll have a manufacturer that makes an object, for example, a universal grip here, and they need that universal grip to fit a very specific um, device. So with this workflow, what we, what I've seen before is you can extract the surface information and take an existing design and make it fit that existing design. So in this instance, we took a universal grip, fit surfaces and cut the surfaces away from that grip. So now that, that grip can be manufactured to fit that very specific firearm. And on the right-hand side, what we have is um, an example of people that need to capture the shape of an object just for reference and to design around. So in this instance, what you can do is scan this firearm and then use it um, inside of the native CAD environment to make design decisions. So maybe you need to design something that comes around this firearm, but doesn't necessarily have to be extracted from that information. So you can take that auto surface model and just load it inside of any CAD package. So now I wanted to transition over into a demonstration, a live demonstration of the capture scanner to start out with. So there's a preview of the, the scanner sitting on my desk, and then I have the Geomagic Design X software loaded right now. So what I can do is I can come over to the uh, Capture plugin in the Home tab and open up the plugin directly inside of our inside of our software here. And from here, you have the ability to connect to different um, scanning devices. 
And you have the ability to turn on and off the turntables. So I also see, you see that I have a turntable connected to this um, device. And I can adjust the exposure up and down of the, of the part. And then I can adjust how many scans that the uh, scanner will take. So once I'm ready, I can hit um, scan. And as you can see in the preview, as you can see in the preview, the, the scanner is capturing the scan information and it's streaming into the software and rotating the part around and taking shots to go all the way around the, the part. So you may be able to see the blue light hitting the object that's on there. So you can see I have a barrel. So what I have it set to do right now is take six different shots going all the way around the outside of the object. There's a variety of ways of propping up a part and scanning it. And as you can see right now, I have the part sitting in a piece of clay. So there's a, uh, a bunch of different options depending on what kind of scanning you're doing and what the object looks like. You may need to scan it from one orientation and then flip it over and put the two groups of scans together. So right now, I've captured the scan information. If I hit the OK button, you'll see that I actually have six different shots and they're uniquely colored scans describing this part. So if I turn off and just look at one scan, you see from that angle, the scanner only saw that information. And if I turn this on, you'll see that it, it saw that that area as well, that mustard looking color. So the way this works is the scanner is, is capturing 3D information describing this part. So if I turn on, you see the vertices of those triangles. These are all thousands and thousands of 3D measurements describing the shape of this part. Now if I turn off the point cloud mode and just go over to the triangle mode, what we do is take those measurements and connect them together into triangles to create a surface. And once we have that surface object, it makes it a lot easier to deal with. So for example, if I have all of these pieces turned on, uh, the clay is not an area that I intended to work with. So I can use my selection tools and it's very easy to see and select things as a surface object. So I can select all of that data and hit delete. So to start out with, you saw that we have a plugin that connects directly to um, the capture scanner. We also have plugins that capture, uh, that capture data from almost any 3D scanner that's on the market that are built right into the software. Um, so after data collection, you have this information here. What is the next step? Uh, well, for one, I have a bunch of individual scans that I need to combine into one object, right? So in order to do that, what I'm going to do is just run a global fine alignment. So the turntable automatically align these scans together pretty closely, but we also have this global fine alignment tool that allows me to take all of those scans and based on their overlapping information, we will align them together more accurately. So you can see if I zoom in that the alignment is a lot tighter because the data is bisecting itself over and over again there with that texture. So now that I have a, a, a tighter alignment, I can merge these two together. So if I come over and I tell the software, I want to combine all of these scanned objects into one and then hit OK. So now what the software is going to do is merge all those triangulated meshes into one mesh that I can then work with to model off of. So going back to the different deliverables that we have available, um, today what I want to do is extract a feature-based model from this information. So we can, we can extract those features from this data by using that mesh as a reference to model off of. And if you remember back to my PowerPoint, we also 
We also have other options where we can extract surface information from this as well and then use it as a reference. But for today, what I'm going to do is take this scan and I'm just going to go ahead and turn it off, actually get rid of it. I have from earlier on, I scanned this from both directions. So as you can see, I have a, a completed scan of the top and bottom. And what I'm going to do here is go ahead and extract this area and create a CAD model from it. Now, in order to do that, what I'm going to do is select this top plane and I'm going to tell it just like I would in a CAD package, I need to extract a sketch in order to extrude that shape along that direction. So in order to do that, I'm going to click on that plane and come over to Mesh Sketch and drag this down. And I'm going to intersect it with that highest point there. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now I'm actually inside of a mesh sketch. So I have all the sketching tools that I would inside of any CAD package. But what I have is a cross section that I can use as a reference to draw my sketch and create nice accurate geometry that follows this part exactly. Um, now, all of the tools for sketching, I can draw anywhere out in space that I want to, or I can actually use the, the geometry itself and snap directly to it. So you see here, if I click on that geometry, I can create a line and it'll best fit a line to that geometry, and the same thing goes here. Now, if I want to, I can window in and say that I want to best fit a line to that geometry. And just to exaggerate it, if I window in and select a little bit of data down here, you'll see that the software is best fitting as best as it can a line between that geometry. So you can see what we're doing is we're doing a lot of the work for you where we can help automatically fit that geometry for you. So you can come in and you can sketch out exactly where you want all these features. Um, and then create the model. So if I select the other areas here, and if I want to draw this along that line. Now you see I drew that line. It's not quite horizontal. If I right click on it, I can say create a horizontal line. So just like um, any CAD package where you need to create um, constraints on the sketch data, you can do that as well. So if I come in and I want to trim these all together, and then you can do things like extend, all the different uh, tools are in here that you'd need to be able to, to create the proper sketch geometry, different types of trimming. Um, over here, you have the ability to chamfer so if I chamfer between those two lines, and then you see you have the ability to um, do fillets as well. So if I drag that and create my fillets, and then not only do we add constraints, but we can also add different dimensions too. So you see when I created that, it automatically dimensioned it based on whatever size that I dragged out, but if I want to override that and say that this has to be a half point zero five, I can override those dimensions. And then you can see that if I want to create a dimension from those two lines, you see that they're not parallel. So if I want to make that vertical and this line vertical as well, I can come over and say I want to dimension that. And all of this information translates over to the CAD package as well. So once I have that, that cross-section, that sketch, and I can turn on my mesh, you see that I drew that in space right over top of the mesh. What we do is we have the tools to be able to automatically uh, create a solid from that. So if I come over to the Model tab and, and I extrude up, I can actually snap it to regions on the mesh to where I say I'm going to extrude up in that direction and then down in this direction. And you see I can apply whatever dimension I want to that and then hit OK. So now what I have on screen is actually a CAD solid that I extracted from that cross section. 
I turn the mesh on and hide the solid. What I can do now is use some other tools that we have inside of our software to extract more of the features that describe this part. So you saw that I manually created a cross section and then extruded it. So that's the manual process for uh, creating geometry inside of our software. The next step is I can actually use wizards to extract the geometry um, of other parts if I really want to. So for example, the side cutout here, if I select these regions, and I just window in and grab all of these different regions, and I tell the software, use those regions to create a solid cut for me. And if I hit next, the, so the software will give me a preview of the chunk that it's gonna cut away. So if I turn the solid on, I can see that preview in space. And then when I hit okay, you'll see that it cuts that automatically away for me. Now, what it created is a featured uh, CAD model. So if I come over to the history tree, it did create a extrude cut and a sketch. So if I need to edit anything about that, I can. I can say edit this sketch and just go normal to. And now if I wanted to apply a fillet to that area, I can apply a fillet to that area and then hit OK. And then you see when I get out of it, it'll have the fillet applied automatically. So you see, we created the manual tools to extract model information, but we also created uh, the tools to uh, manually edit and automatically extract. So from here, I can do the same uh, steps um, and just extract some other information just to show you how it works again, how fast it can be extracted. So if I say I want to do another um, solid cut from here, and I just say that I want to do a solid cut in this direction, and just turn on that solid and you can see, hit OK and it'll cut it away. And the same thing goes for the hole down the middle here. So if I come in and I do another extrude and do a solid cut, I can tell it through all as well. And then go back and now if I turn on my CAD model, you can see that I was able to cut that away. So for, for basic prismatic features, that's really powerful, but uh, another thing that's nice about the wizards, and these are where I actually use them more often, um, because those save me some time extracting geometry, but where they're really handy is for different shapes like this that are highly organic. So if I have this, this region right here that I want to work with, I can come over and I can say I want to do an extrusion wizard but instead of doing a solid, I can tell it to do a surface. And then when I hit next, you see here that I can extract a surface from that information. And you'll see that it fit, it calculated the direction, it drew a sketch for me, and then gave me a preview of a surface piece of geometry there. And then when I hit okay, you'll see that it builds the surface. Now, again, just like, all the other features that we created, I can come over and I can tell that I want to edit that. So right here, I put a little fillet on the end. If I, if I want to change that, I can. If I wanted to draw a line out and apply some tangency, I can just tell it, make a tangent line off the end of that arc and get out, you'll see that it updates and rebuilds. Now from this step, if I modeled the entire part, um, what I can do is just send over the objects over into a CAD package as native geometry. So the way that works is if I come over to the Home tab, and I'm just going to send over the little bit that we created today. And you can see I can say send over to SolidWorks. That's what I have uh, that I happen to have saved. And I say start from first feature. 
So what it's going to do is open up SolidWorks and then say, uh, send over those native geometries um, into that environment. So as it's opening, you can see that we also have other CAD packages available that you can send it to. But just for the sake of time, I have this installed on my computer. And you can see it sending them over. I had another plugin that I uninstalled there, so. So it's sending them over right now, and then once it's finished, you can see that I can edit the native geometries. So you see it building the native sketch and then cutting it away and the other native sketches and cutting them away. And you'll see the surface that it created as well. And then when it's done, it tells me that it succeeded. And then I'll just turn off some other geometries. But just to show, um, if I click on that face, it shows that that extrude cut is associated with this one. If I say I want to edit that sketch, I come into the SolidWorks sketch, and you'll see that it's all native geometry. So if I if I drag this line over and then exit the sketch, you'll see that it rebuilds the model. So it's native geometry. So that's a demonstration of the uh, Geomagic Design X and the Capture Scanner. Um, I wanted to open it up for any questions that people might have about the workflow. If we don't have anything, then there will be a recording made of this, so we'll have that available or make that available to you guys. Let me just pull up the questions. All right, so it doesn't actually look like we have any questions. Wait. Um, if you have any other questions later on that you think of uh, after watching the recording, um, then feel free to reach out to Exact Metrology. They have the ability to answer any of the questions that you guys might have. Um, thank you a lot for your time. I hope this was informative and beneficial for your company.